A wetland is a unique ecosystem that is the bridge between terrestrial ecosystems and aquatic ecosystems. So for example, a forest and a stream. They have unique soils, they have plants that are adapted to living in those wet conditions, and then they have water. Those three things make a wetland. Wetlands are, are you know, control large parts of the hydrologic cycle but they also control large parts of the carbon cycle. And it's, it's got a lot, of, uh, a lot of mass, a lot of biomass, because there's so much water that it can grow very quickly. These systems are incredibly productive systems. And so they are a very impressive, what we call natural carbon sink, that is helping to mitigate climate change. Wetlands are able to store as much or even more carbon than forests. They're great recreational opportunities too. People like to go bird watching in wetlands, for example, or they're some of the most fun places to go kayaking through. So they can be very magical, wonderful places to do recreation as well. Wetlands also help improve water quality and protect coastlines from flooding. But landowners and governments have not always recognized the value of wetlands. Wetlands were seen as essentially swamps, things that you wanted to get rid of. Uh, so wetlands were systematically destroyed, you know, and then converted to urban land in the case of uh, South Florida. And the same has been happening in other wetland systems around the world. Fernando Marias Wilhelm, Ariana Sutton Greer, and their colleagues at the University of Maryland's Earth System Science Interdisciplinary Center are learning about threats to wetland ecosystems and working to find solutions. When we destroy coastal wetlands, that carbon that was locked up in that soil very rapidly gets lost back to the atmosphere. So what was a really important natural carbon sink has suddenly become a new human-caused source of carbon. Uh, the, the constant and frequent flooding that occurs in, in Florida is because wetlands were there to prevent that from happening. You get rid of the wetlands, you start flooding. Mariah's Wilhelm recently contributed to a National Academy's report on the restoration of the Florida Everglades. And essentially climate change has two key effects on Everglades restoration. The Everglades are very low-lying wetlands, which means uh, that they're very susceptible to sea level rise. Salt is able to move in and displace fresh water. Climate change probably will decrease the amount of rain that goes in. So when you have less rain coming in and seawater moving through, what you create is well, what I like to refer to as a sandwich effect, where basically fresh water is being squeezed out on both ends. Sutton Greer recently co-authored a study in the journal Frontiers in Ecology and the Environment that found coastal wetlands to be exceptionally good at storing carbon. We get asked all the time, why are you only talking about wetlands? Why are we not talking about corals? Why are we not talking about fish? Coastal blue carbon is the carbon taken up and stored in coastal wetlands, mangroves, salt marsh and tidal marshes, and also seagrasses. The answer on, all, on, on corals, kelp, and, and on fish is that they are very important habitats. They are, however, not long-term carbon sinks. The University of Maryland has a large part to play in the future of wetlands research. I think as we move forward with increasing threats of climate change, we really need a new generation of practitioners, professionals, to attack these problems that are, that are going to be uh, probably much more severe than they are today. I get to work here with faculty at University of Maryland, and I also sit at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. My position really allows me to bridge a lot of worlds so that I am really at that science and policy nexus, really thinking about how is the science we're doing getting used for better management and policy making. The fact that we've gotten better and better at measuring wetland biomass from space using remote sensing, satellite technology, is what has enhanced in a very short period of time, and I'm really looking at the last 10 years, our understanding of wetlands as systems. So if you look at the University of Maryland, in, within a five mile radius, you'll find the highest concentration of Earth system remote sensing scientists in the world. And that is what we bring to the table very effectively in the area of wetlands.